Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 30th. January is almost over. Man, that went fast. It's cold here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It was 8 degrees when I woke up this morning with wind chill. It was zero. I know some of you guys have much worse than that. Ever young. Uh, but here, if we get below the teens, it's cold. And this is really cold. Uh, we got about three inches of snow, three to four inches of snow, Friday into Saturday. And that's just stayed very fluffy because it's been so cold. Uh, so it's just blowing all over the place, and you clear the sidewalk, and it just blows right back on. So it's it's a wonderful, wonderful late January day here. My dogs got me up. So I, I normally get up. Uh, around six and you know shower brush teeth change all that kind of stuff and and then come downstairs by about 6 30 and that's when the dogs go out well this morning i had the audacity to not get out of bed until 6 30 and the dogs let me know about it <laughs> so i came downstairs and uh yeah i let them out in the yard and and they weren't out for very long because it was so cold and it was cold it was cold in the house uh and they came in, and I thought, man, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm just going to sit down for a little bit. And I just sat down. While they were out in the yard, I, I just sat there. I was just kind of spaced out, and then they barked to come in. I let them in and everything, and I sat down again. I had, you know, no coffee, nothing. And I said, boy, I'm cold. And I had a little throw blanket thing that I, I next thing I knew, it was 9 o'clock. I just zonked in that chair and I guess I needed the rest you know my wife keeps telling me that you know I'll, I'll say boy I'm I'm getting kind of sleepy around you know three o'clock in the afternoon I better get up and do something and she'll say no your body's trying to make you rest so you can heal and she, she takes such good care of me but yeah so it's been a very slow start to the morning but it's now about 10 30 we're all caught up and we do have coffee Special club. Special because uh, I'm apparently an invalid to the point where I'm not allowed to lift the coffee pot. I think that's extreme, but my wife is, again, very protective. So she makes the coffee the night before, I just have to turn it on. And then I can tip the pot without lifting it off the counter. And get... She and she's done a wonderful job of it for you know for a week now. She she doesn't drink coffee. She doesn't make coffee. This is like her first week of making coffee for me, and she's done a wonderful job. But last night she forgot to put the little diffuser on top of the percolator basket, and uh, this is a bit um, unique in its flavor profile. I'll just say that. But I'm drinking it. It's dark brown and has caffeine in it, so what are you going to do? Hmm. And I've got the, the Mighty Hercules, and in the Hercules I've got, um, actually I'm, I'm still smoking my first bowl of um, Pegasus, and I will probably, ah, oh, it's a lot of smoke, I will probably finish probably finish this bowl uh, during this video so I'll have to reload that's weird this is because there's a window right up right up here and the Sun is coming through it now I don't normally record this time of day so yeah so I wanted to talk today about something that's been on my mind the past week um, and it's this phrase that an old boss and mentor of mine used to use quite frequently. I may have talked about this before because it sounds familiar to me as I'm saying this, but bear with me. Uh, he used to use the phrase, what does finished look like? He used to ask that question all the time. It was to the point where you'd be in a conversation with him and you could actually say, okay, when is he going to ask, what does finished look like? His reason for doing that, and it is corporate speak, you know, it is one of these catchphrases that, that get used. His reason for it was that 
a lot of times, especially in science, which is my field, you can get on tracks and there's just one question that gets answered, but it creates five more questions and you have to pick amongst those five which one you're going to answer next and sometimes you need to answer two and then, so you got parallel tracks now and you get an answers, but then there's another five in each. So it can be an ever expanding process. But I hated the question. And the reason I hated it was that there's a lot of art in science. And I know the artistic types would laugh at me for saying that. But there really is. You know, you're, you're evolving a story. And you know, it's hopefully a true story, but you're, you're evolving this over time and you have to kind of craft which direction it's going to go in by choosing which questions you're going to answer as things go along. But there is a lot of art in it and a lot of beauty in it too. You know, you sometimes find things that are just stunningly beautiful in terms of how, in my case, the human body is, is put together to work or the brain is put together to work. Um, but there's things like mathematics has beauty in it that I, I wish, I always get upset when I hear people say, oh, I don't do math, I can't do math. You know, you're missing out on so much beauty that, you know, it's like there's this museum of these, these beautiful paintings by the Renaissance masters that people are saying, oh, I, I, don't, I don't look at that museum. You know, it's a shame, it's a real shame. So there's a lot of art in science, and it's very hard. You know, there's this famous uh, quote. Boy, that smoke is really annoying. I'm going to try shifting around here a little bit and see if that helps. Oh, sorry. So there's this famous quote, uh, Michelangelo, when he's painting the Sistine Chapel. And this was, this was in the movie The Agony and the Ecstasy, which is a really wonderful movie. That's not going to work, is it? It's a really wonderful movie if you ever get a chance to, to see it about his painting of the Sistine Chapel. And the Pope would come out, he was taking too long. You know, he would like paint something and then he'd paint over it and start again. He was just taking too long. And the Pope would come out and he would yell up at him in the scaffolding that he was laying on to paint the, the ceiling. And he'd say, when will you finish? And Michelangelo would shout back because he had this very abusive relationship with the Pope. <laughs> he would just shout back at him. When I'm finished, <laughs> uh, when will you be done or when will you make an end of it was what the Pope would ask and his answer would be when I'm finished. How do you know when you're finished when you're doing something like the Sistine Chapel? Did he ever say I'm finished or did he just say uh, I'm tired of doing this <laughs> or you know they're not going to pay me unless I say it's done. And there's so many things in life that are like that. Now, there are things, I'm out of Pegasus, there are things that you can finish um, and you know when you're finished. You know, for example, I'm going to eat the sandwich. Well, you're finished when the sandwich is gone. Although maybe you're not going to eat the whole sandwich. So then your level of hunger comes into play. So even in that simple example, it's not that simple. But it's an interesting question to ask. You know, as much as I hated answering it, I saw the value in it because it makes you focus the effort. It makes you say, okay, why am I doing this? Thing? What is my end goal? And very often we don't do that. You know, I'm going to renovate and recon reconfigure my shop. And so I started in this corner and I'm moving in that direction. And it's, it's great, you know. but. What is my end goal? What do I finally want to have here? And I've never, I've never thought through that. I should, but I never have. Uh, I'm going to landscape the yard. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But what is that going to look like? What, what, what is finished look like when I landscape the yard? And I guess if you have a, a landscaper come in, he lays out a plan for you, and you say, okay, it's finished when I've spent this much money. <laughs> when it looks the way that plan looks. But when you're doing it yourself, what this finish look like? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restore this car. What this finish look like? Yeah, it's it's interesting. What, what about in relationships? Are you ever finished in a relationship? I'm I'm gonna marry this woman and I'm gonna do my best to to love her and to share my life with her. 
Is that ever done? I'm going to raise my children. That's a good one because, you know, you'll hear people say, well, you, they're always my child. He, he's 30 years old, but he's still my baby. And maybe that's fine. You know, maybe that's, that's healthy. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't know when you're finished working on a relationship. Maybe you never are finished working on a relationship. I, I think that's probably the case. But yeah, what does finished look like? I thought about this uh, during this past week, partly because I've been going through these negotiations with my wife about what I can and can't do. Like, you know, can I, can I empty the dishwasher? You know, I'd like to be of some help. I, it's my job to do the dishes after dinner, and I haven't been able to do them. So can I at least empty the dishwasher when it's ready? No, no, you got to wait another, another week at least. Okay, but how are we going to know? You know what, is, what is the thing that's going to say, okay, the healing is finished to the point where you can now do the visual. When can I start to use my, uh, my power tools? Okay. Well, I cheated a little bit yesterday, don't tell. Uh, to no ill effect other than I got really tired. Um, so I probably shouldn't have done that. But I have been able to do something. I've been playing with, um, with oddly enough, finishing techniques. And I, no pun intended. I, I just realized the connection there. And I, I really didn't mean to make this a play on words. So I've been working on different ways to finish Briar. And this block right here, hopefully you can see some of the, the detail in the grain there. Um, I have finished this block. It's, this was probably, oh, a good uh, half inch thicker when I started. This is a not good piece of briar. It's got a lot of inclusions in it. It, it was not cut well for a reasonable size pipe. I bought it actually to use for making like briar plugs and briar dust for fills and things like that. And I decided to start playing with finishes because this is something I can do without lifting anything, right? I can, I can lightly sand it by holding it in my hand and just doing this so there's no twisting motion in my body. Um, I can apply the finishes and let them dry and sand them and I can, I can buff and wax because that's just standing in one place. Um, and it's not a complicated surface where I'm having to do a lot of moving. I'm just holding it and going, you know, like this. So. Yeah, I, I think I can do this, and I, I have been doing this. I've, I've finished this about eight times now. And I'm playing with different ways to highlight the, the grain. And this is, I hope that's showing up. It's very hard for me to see with that sun coming in. Yeah, this is one method of just doing a, a contrast stain that I've been playing with. The other thing I've been doing as I go through this is I've been working on my sanding. And that might sound weird because sanding is just removing... A, a, a layer but it's not because if you sand you know if you're trying to highlight the grain you can see there's lighter grain in here in, in here so if you sand more in here you're going to wind up with a bald spot if you sand less up here where there's a lot of grain you're going to wind up with a dark spot so balancing that out across the briar and how do you see that as you're as you're sanding it especially at the at the lower grits where you're removing a lot of material and it's harder to see through the scratches and the dust. So it's been an interesting exercise, just finishing this, looking at it, photographing it, uh, keeping notes on what I do, and then getting out the 80 grit sandpaper and starting all over again. Um, it's kept me sane, <laughs> but there's so much I've learned. You know, it, it really is amazing. And there's so many different ways to do this. Um, and involving not just, hopefully you can see which shoulder is it back there over my shoulder. There, there's a whole collection of 
potions and powders and whatnot that I've been playing with. It's not just leather dyes, but other things I've been experimenting with. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to get to the same or a very similar end product. And which one of those do you like? Which one of those are the ones you're going to use when you say, okay, I'm now going to put a contrast thing on? Oh, I don't know. Because I don't know what finish looks like. In this case, I don't know what finishes look like. So I guess you can answer the question, what do finishes look like? But what does finish look like is a bit more difficult. It's an artistic process. By the way, I reloaded with some Haunted Bookshop while I was talking. So that's pretty much going to be life for the uh, for the next little bit. Um, at least it's going to be at least a, a week, maybe two more weeks before I can actually start to do a bit more with uh, like my my band sander, which I need to work on a stem that I'm making for my buddy Bill. And I still have Ben and Rick and. I think that's it. I think those are the only folks that are waiting right now. Bill is a is a pretty straightforward stem replacement project, but it's, it's a nice pipe. I'm looking forward to, to to doing a nice job on that one. The other two I've got a bit more artistic freedom with, so I'm kind of excited about those. And we'll see how they come out. But yeah, I don't know when I'm going to really be able to start making progress on that. But it's good. You know, it's good. I'm, I'm feeling good and, and I'm so happy that I got this, this thing fixed. Uh, so it's worth the, worth the slowing down for a bit. And there's other stuff that I can focus on. So in terms of coming up, coming attractions, um, Wednesday has been very hit and miss for me lately. Uh, work's been busy, and I've been tired, to be honest. I, I just haven't had the, uh, you know, I finish up. What I normally do is I finish up work on a Wednesday, and then I'll turn and set this up and do a do a little chat. But lately, I just ha I just want to go upstairs and veg out for a while while I wait for dinner. So Wednesday's hit and miss, and it's going to continue to be. We'll be back on Friday with... Uh, another uh, virtual pipe club, Keenrod Pipes Virtual Pipe Club. And the following Friday, February 11th, is going to be the, um, the I Hate Roger Godell tasting. I hope, you know what, I'm not going to push the button because I don't remember if I, eh, let's see if I can show you. The, you know what, I, I had a picture, but I don't, I don't remember how to put it up. Um, it's the, the uh, we're going to be tasting Tim Fournier's uh, blend, I Hate Roger Goodell, as part of our Super Bowl Spectacular on February 11th at 8 o'clock. That's going to be a lot of fun. I've got, uh, other than myself and Tim, and we'll, we'll both be in, in the video, uh, we also will have Street Glide Piper, Zippo 675, I think. That's Josh and Derek, and Pirate Frog 333, Robbie. Uh, they'll all be joining us in the video as well, so it should be fun. We're gonna, it's similar to what we did with Windjammer. We're just going to open it up for the first time and give our first impressions. And Tim, the blender, will be there to talk us through it. Should be a lot of fun. And beyond that, we're just going to roll through the rest of the winter. I've got one guest I'm, I'm, I need to schedule. And uh, we'll do that. I've got a couple of ideas. I want to contact a few people and see if they'd be interested. But I'm not going to go back to an every other week interview cycle just because it's been harder to find people. And... Not that people don't want to do it, but everybody's busy, and, you know, I appreciate that. Also, there's other people doing this, and, um, you know, a lot of times I've gotten in touch with someone, and they said, well, I just last week 
did this on YouTube. And went, oh, okay. I, I get it. And uh, there's people doing it better than me, frankly. So, yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah, so that's where we are. We got some ideas, but we'll we'll talk about them down the road. Okay, well, I think I've taken up enough of your Sunday. I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday and looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.